Hey everybody, it's uh, your boy C. Murovitz. Welcome to another episode of More Than Just a Game. And uh, tonight, uh, you know, we've got a very special guest. Uh, you know, he is he's another Melbourne son. He's another son of Melbourne. Uh, grew up in Melbourne. Uh, Known him since he was seventeen. Uh, and uh, you know, he's uh, he's an awesome. He's an amazing father, husband uh, to his wife. Uh, but also, um, you know, he is a former uh, professional rugby player of the Melbourne Rebels. And we're very honoured and privileged to have, have him here with us tonight, all the way from Melbourne, the man himself, a.k.a. the Scotch Deluxe, Ferretti Sa'anga. Welcome also to more than just a game. How are you, bro? Oh, bro. Good, man. How are you, Chris? Yeah, good. Also, just still trying to keep it warm, you know, with no hair and, uh, you know, <laughs> trying to find different coloured beanies and stuff. <coughs> Keep it's all right, man. Uh, my my you know, dad my dad's bored too, so I'm on my way. I can't wait. I <laughs> yeah, can't I think, wait. I, th- I think you're all good, bro. I think you're all right, man. I think uh, <laughs> you know. I think you know. I, I think I know. I know if uh, someone's gonna hit the way that we and your father, uh, we and your dad, you know, because uh, you know you start to see the you know the you know those ones the the the, the holes in the head <laughs> yeah holes in the head and you know and then when people talk to you you know they, they don't look at your eyes they look at your head. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, hey, my, my, my eyes are over here, my face is hidden over here. But uh, <laughs> now you look all good, also, man. Look all good. Hey, um, yeah, thanks, thanks for making time, man. Uh, I know, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, you got, it's, uh, you got a busy schedule with everything not happening, but um, thanks, boy, for making time, man. Uh, how, how's the family, man? Yeah, good, bro. Like, uh, it's been awesome. Obviously, just retired, so I've just been, uh, yeah, just looking at different, um, business ventures or, you know, just sort of to, to, to see where I, I want to sort of head uh, the next chapter of my life pretty much. Um, but it's been awesome just to spend time with my, uh, with my kids. Um, I think, uh, oh, also currently the Rebels uh, are locked away from, um, so because you know how they close the borders? Oh, wow. So if I was, um, yeah, if I was still playing, my, 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 my wife's about to give birth as well. So if I, if I was... <laughs> I was still playing. I would have been locked away. I wouldn't have been back, come, uh, been able to come back. Or, well, yeah, that would have yeah. been pretty difficult. <laughs> wow, right. And so, uh, kids, kids, wise man, how, um, how many? Uh, for mommy asking, for any, how many kids you got now, man? Uh, twenty. Nah, twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty close to twenty. <laughs> oh, man, uh, I've got, got, I've got four kids and um yes. and one on the one on the way. Wow, that's that's wow, man. That would have been tricky eh, if you were um, still playing and um, you know you got stuck away. And but uh, man, that's also man, awesome to to see you doing well, man. And uh, like I said uh, in the introduction, uh, we've known each other for a while now. I remember uh, Ferretti is the young seventeen-year-old still at school, and I remember that day we had some we had some sushi and sushi, yeah. And, and look at you now, man, a super rugby player and. Uh, former super rugby player and also now an amazing father and husband. Man, that's, that's awesome. What a journey, bro. Yeah, thanks, man. I owe you, I owe you Chris, a lot. Like not many people understand, but uh, yeah, just having those mentors um, as a young kid, um, yeah, uh, it, it, it's, it, it really helped me a lot. You, you, God placed you in my life in exactly at the right time, you know, and it, and it gave me a little kick up the butt just to just to keep going that, that the, well, the right direction, I guess, as you would say, yeah. You know, we are, no, I mean, it's always, always a blessing, bro, you know, like, uh, you know, it's just wherever we can help, you know, we're there. And uh, sometimes we all need to kick up the bar, still get a kick up the bar. Michelle kicks me up the bar. <laughs> yeah, that's what the wives are for, man. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, no, it's good. It's good, man. It's good to see you doing well. Hey, um, just before we kick off our interview, uh, I've got a, got a couple of warm-up questions. I, I know you, we've done a few interviews in the past on, on uh, at our conference and, on stage, and you know how much I love my room up questions, eh? just, to yeah. kind of the, just to kind of get the vibes going, you know, and, uh, and all that. But I've got three questions today. Um, and uh, the first one is, you know, being a, a former professional athlete, um, I mean, I know that when I was, uh, you know, training hard out and, and uh, playing rugby, I would always look forward to the weekend because it was cheat meal day. Yeah, right? yeah. And yeah. so uh, being, but, but being the level that you got up to, or super rugby and that, like, uh, Man, I know that you would have been looking forward to that after that Friday night game or after that Sunday game or Thursday game. What was your go-to, man? Like, uh, what did you used to crave after Bro, the game on the way home? So, after the game, I remember one time um, I had to go back home with my parents because um, I, I left my car at my uh, at my place. So, I had to leave, uh, uh, catch a ride home with my parents. And, um, yeah, 
after, after that night, I'm a vegetarian too, so oh, that's I, right, yeah. I, I just remember uh, just telling my mom that, man, we need, I really need to get a pizza and a pasta and, and I, I go mushroom, mushroom, creamy mushroom pasta. Oh, sick. Yeah. And, uh, and just a nice big, like, margarita pizza. But, bro, it, cheat day, because I'm a prop, man, uh, a cheat day t- tends to last longer than it should. Sometimes I have a cheat day. <laughs> where, like, I just, I just have, like, a, a, if a game, uh, the day after the game, I, I tend to go, because I'm from the north side yeah. in, uh, in Melbourne, I go to Preston Market and I have their, their pizzas, which is, like, I think it's, like, 10 Vinny's Pizza. Shout out to Vinny's Pizza. Oh, ten right. bucks, ten bucks for family pizza, and the hot jam donuts there too. So that's uh, if you're from the north, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's, that's my cheat meals. That's, that's a sicky cheat meal, man. I mean, with that pasta, you don't even have to have meat when it's creamy mushroom. Oh, it's uh, you know the the best. And uh, <laughs> it's funny what you said. Like uh, yeah, I used to do the same too. Some sort of, like you know you kind of like kind of play with it eh? because you're like cheat meal. As soon as you eat a cheat meal, not a cheat day. Eh? Cheat day. <laughs> and, then, and then cheat days last for two days. Eh? <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's awesome. So any vegetarians out there, man, what do you suggest? What What's uh, what's your, uh, you know, what kind of uh, sticky foods you want to kind of, like, any young vegetarians out there? What can you recommend? Oh, bro. Um, I'm probably the, the worst um, vegetarian or vegan. I, I actually, like, struggle to eat vegetables, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I tend to stick more to like a vegan, vegan and vegetarian pizzas and nice. uh, you know the fake fake meats. I'm like, I feel like I'm still a meat eater, but I just don't want to touch meat anymore because of all the stuff that I know now. But yeah, yeah, I'm I'm still a I'm like a vegan meat eater. If you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, got you, man. Got you. Nah, shop a lot. Uh, second question is, uh, you know, what's um. I mean, yeah, we all grew up, uh, I remember growing up watching uh, Kung Fu movies because my uncles used to watch it, my dad, so, you know, you always yeah, used to yeah, try nice. to be a Kung Fu kid and all that. Yeah. But, um, you know, for you, like, what was uh, what was your what was your favourite movie? Like, it could be from when you were growing up or even now, and, and also why? Like, why? Oh, uh, bro, back in the day, I loved, um, I loved Mulan, uh, Mulan back in the day. You know yeah. Mulan? The Disney yeah, movie? The, is that the Samurai? Uh, yeah, yeah, the Chinese, um, I think, warrior. And the girl, she, like, the, the girl, she's... Yeah, yeah, and then she has to yeah, pretend, yeah. yeah, she has to pretend that she's a guy, and and then, yeah. I just like, yeah. <laughs> she pretends that she's a guy. Yeah. Because, because she pretended because she wanted to, because she liked someone late or something. Or yeah, that. oh, she tried to um, defend her dad because she didn't want ah. her dad to go, to go to war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, wow. yeah. So, she, yeah, she... Sorry, bro. Um, she went to um, what you call it? Yeah, to fight the war instead of her dad, and then yeah, yeah. So she, um, she, yeah, yeah. So she, she actually did it for her dad. It's not that she wanted to be a. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, she didn't want to be a guy. Don't go down that road. <laughs> No, that's but, cool. Yeah. That's cool. That, that's a, that's a good movie. I mean, that's that's a good movie because um, you know, there's a greater cause. You know, there was a greater greater purpose to um, you know, to what and why she you know she did that. You know, and sometimes in life, you know, when you have a dream and you have a goal, you know, you, you, you do whatever it takes. Um, you know, and, and stuff. So she did whatever it took to protect her father, uh, which I totally understand. Uh, yeah. And all of that. Eh? So no, nah, that's awesome, bro. And then the last question, bro. I know, man. Uh, I remember when I was chaplain at the the Ripples and used to walk into the gym. You know, I, I, you know, I've never walked into the gym and there was like Mozart or you know, uh, was it uh, you know any classical music? And it was always like you know, pumping music. Okay, so you know, when you were training or uh, still training, uh, you know, what, what's your like? What's what music do you listen to just to kind of get you in the mood? Like just to kind of like be the beast, you know? Like what what kind of music? <laughs> Be the beast. Uh, just to lift up the car. You know the cars that you've been lifting. Yeah, yeah. Just to cut the cars. And <laughs> the <everything>. car. <laughs> Sorry, my kids' toy cars. Yeah. <laughs> um. No. Uh. Music. Uh. Bro, I- I'll just listen to whatever the boys are listening to. I think. Uh. When I was uh. Well, uh, when I'm in there, I guess it's like just. Uh. Like the old, like Travis Scott, whatever. The upbeat onesie. 
yeah, I'd be like when the Islanders jump on, uh, on so it, it it all works like whoever gets there first, yeah, um, and With gets the their phone onto the speaker, mm. they they will be the DJ for the the session. So when you walk in, you'll know when the Islanders are have gotten the speaker first because they've got their like you know Venga boys and stuff like that happening, and and I love you know that's. Us Islanders, we like to just, you know, lift to like, you know, there's like nice tunes, but then you know that the Balangis are on when they've got their uh, their uh, techno and their, their house music and stuff, which I yeah, like yeah. too. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't really have a favorite song. Eh? I just like just whatever, whatever, just whatever gets you moving, eh? Whatever gets me going, man. Whatever. Was, um, I, think, I think I went in there one time and I think you were uh, one of the DJs. I think your phone was on. And then all of a sudden, like, I couldn't believe my ears, but then you know, I heard like um, Ebba. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know what? You're, you're probably right, man. Because I like um, I like '80s music as well. '80s, Same. 80s Same. music's where it's at, man. When you're especially, when you need to get a little bit of a lift. Yeah, nah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Especially the kids don't up. know these days, Chris. The kids don't the, know. The kids don't know these days, man. You know, <laughs> I asked my son, I thought, hey, did you know these guys? No, no, you never know. Me. But um, <laughs> now nah, that's cool, man. Shop ready for giving us a little bit of insight into you know your favorite cheat meal. Favorite movie and, and also a favorite workout. So I know a lot of the viewers tonight, uh, they too will be wondering, man, what could be my cheat meal? Or, you know, like think about what's their new favorite movie or favorite workout song to help them push through. Especially in these times when, you know, COVID, not much you can do, but uh, turn your garage into a gym and use bricks as weights and yeah. that kind of stuff. So you want to have some music to kind of keep you moving, eh? So uh, it's good, bro. Awesome, uh, Fritty. So now we're going to just, uh, you know, just to kind of like turn the heat up a little bit. Um, because you're like in the game, you had your warm up, and then now yep. we actually start the game. And uh, I just wanted to yeah, start the game off tonight just by, um, you know, just a little segment called um, uh, Get to Know You, right? And, uh, you know, we we know Ferretti is a super rugby player, uh, but maybe we want to know who is Ferretti, like who is Ferretti, where were you born, you know, what inspired you to play rugby, you know, um, was there any challenges that you faced growing up in Melbourne as, as a teenager? But also, like, what were some of the challenges you faced, um, you know, as a professional athlete, and, and how did you overcome? So, tell us, man, who's for Ritty Sanga, man? Oh yeah, bro. Like, I well, I was born in um, in the Royal Women's Hospital. Uh, mum and mum uh, and dad lived in uh, Preston, so that's where I, uh, in the north side. So that's where I, re- I grew up till I, till I was about 12, 13. Yeah. So I started playing rugby for Northgate Panthers around there um, because they were literally down the road and, and dad was playing uh, for them, you know, whilst I, well, before I was born. So, yeah, I uh, fell in love with the club, the red and black, and then they started adding yellow. And, yeah, like, that was pretty much our, like, my life from, from, from then on, going to church and stuff like that and, you know, doing the chores whilst I'm at home. Uh, during school holidays, uh, yeah, pretty much just like a normal, you know, normal, normal life uh, with my brothers and my and my sister um, at the time. But yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much how it started. Um, but yeah, just just a, a normal kid from the north side, I guess. And then uh, when I was twelve, thirteen, uh, we moved out to Thomastown. Yeah, um, and that was cool. Because uh, I always I always looked at Thomastown as like this cool, like that's where all the the cool kids lived. But then when I got there, all the cool kids moved out to Grady Burn and uh, and all that. So yeah, we were just there. All our friends moved out. So we were just yeah, pretty much like one of the only Islander families. Oh well, the ones that we knew that were living in Thomastown. But yeah, that's uh, man, what a, that's awesome, man. Like just uh, I mean, born and bred here. Uh, in in, the, in Melbourne and um, you know growing up in Melbourne, um, it's awesome to see that um, you know how far you've come. Uh, you know, to, because you know most you know I know that most um, you know young athletes, young athletes, they actually they leave the state to, to go out, you know to achieve what their their dream is in rugby or, or whatever. But yeah. um, you know you you showed that man, you can be born and bred in Melbourne uh, and play for the Rebels um, and that you know. So now that's awesome, man. Um, and then so um. You know what? What was what 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 was uh, that defining moment where, you know, or what you know? No, wait. Let me go back. You know, growing up in Melbourne, you would have, you know, would have there would have been temptations. There would have been 
uh, you know, distractions around. Like, you know, we see today a lot of young, young kids, uh, you know, joining gangs and getting distracted that way. Like, how, how, what kept you, like, in line? Like, what kept you in line with your purpose and your dream? Like, that was like, you know what? No, nah, man, I, I know where I'm going. Regardless of what's happening around me, I'm going to just keep moving towards my goal. What kept you going? Like, and, 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 you know, what kind of advice can you give to the young kids t- today in regards to that? Uh, to be honest, bro, I owe a lot to to God. Um, I, I there's just you know you know now that you're 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 a bit older, like you you kind of look back and you're just like, man, I can't believe I got through these certain situations or like yeah. you know without being um, persuaded to go the other way because there it, there was a lot of that, bro. And like obviously you know, Chris, like as a young as a young kid, you just find yourself in like situations like I was always. Like I wasn't, I wasn't like the perfect kid, but I, I did have good parents. Like parents, um, my parents showed me love and support. Um, my dad was a hard worker. Um, he would he would come back, and then I'd, I'd I'd just see him, you know, be you know resting on the couch, and it wouldn't be long. Like he used to work security. So um, if you if you any of you guys know how a security man works, like they work night shifts and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. And then when they come back, they try and stay up and spend time, and then, and then you got this period of the of the day where you have to stay quiet so they can sleep and then get up for the next shift. You know what I mean? So yeah. So like I I witnessed that at a young age, and my dad always told me like you know you don't want this life, you don't want to you don't want to keep working like this and stuff like that. And um, yeah, they they um, my mom and my dad kept implementing um, just like in my mind, just, you know, there, there could be a better life, you know what I mean? Like, there could be yeah. a better way to, to to live. So, and and that's pretty much what stuck with me all the way up till I was a, a teenager. Like, whenever I got in uh, faced with, like, you know, started getting old enough to do cl- like clubbing and, you know, all, like, hanging out with a certain crowd, like, I would know. Like, I would know if there would be a good people or if they would, lead me down the, the the wrong path and then all it all it was for me bro it was just to make the right choice at the time and you know sometimes you get teased for it sometimes you'll be like oh you know leave him like you know leave him be he's a loser because you know he doesn't want to do this doesn't want to yeah. do that so I kind of felt I, I, it was hard at the time when I was a young kid but I, I just started taking pride in you know not walking with the crowd pretty much like and there was a lot of that I, I, I had a lot of friends that could have been you know, something like, you know, they could, they, there were a lot of kids that were way better players than my, myself. But um, yeah, they, it, it all just came down to choice. Like, um, but I do, like, it, it was never just me, man. It was, it was, it wasn't just me. It was, um, it was my parents. It was guys like yourself that came in. Um, I've got an uncle in Torquay that, uh, that, uh, um, that I owe a lot to. Uh, after, I, I didn't finish school. So, um, when I when I left, my dad suggested that I go, you know, work with him. And and um, what my uncle does is work in uh, disability. Wow. And you know, when you're working in disability, I'm like 17, 18. You know, not long after I met you, Chris. You know, yeah, like really, and I was, yeah. and I was trying to push for Oz twenties and and Sar twenties and stuff. And and I was working with my uncle. And my uncle, man, he was just motivated businessman. Like he he just he. He always went against the grain, and you know people didn't really like him a lot. Like his, um, the way he, he wasn't popular with his methods and stuff like that. But man, I, I just respect him because he, he just stuck to what he believed in and just you know, went all out and and yeah, like guys like that inspired me. You know, like guys yeah. like, like that. So yeah, man, I, and I and God, God is. I, I know God was there all the time, just yeah. placing the right people in my life and 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 yeah, because like. like like I said before, man, it could have gone either way, you know, depending yeah. on what choice I made. But yeah, that's yeah. No, that's a man, that's a man, that's a, a great um, takeaways and um, just life experience you just shared there, Fred, because you know it reminds me of a story I heard once that having a dream is like, um, you know, let's say one day you're walking down the road and let's say if you don't have a dream, uh, a, a car pulls up and it's your boys and they say, hey, Ferretti, jump in. And then when you don't have a dream, you know, you just jump in, hey? just, you, you, just, you just go. And then, uh, and then, you know, end up in places where, um, you know, it means you're either in prison or 
you know, unfortunately, or you know, or the worst case scenario, you end up, you know, dead, right? Yeah. But when you have a dream, using the same kind of scenario, it's like uh, the same car pulls up and they say, "Hey, Ferretti, jump in." But because you have a dream, you know, you ask the question, like you have what wisdom, and you're like, "Where are you guys going?" And then they say, "Oh, going over here." And they're, no, 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 no. I'm on. No, I'm going this way. You know. And like you said, you know, it's about that that choice. Um, you know, you either choose to stay where you are, or you choose to be better. And I think that's what a lot of young kids need to know these days. Um, even even adults, you know, wherever they are in their current circumstance, it all comes down to choice. And you know, just like when you make a choice to stay where you are, it, seems, it takes a choice to change your situation. Um, and just to hear, you know, your story and the choices that you've made. Um, and I know it hasn't been easy. Uh, I know it has been some, you know, a brief journey for a while. And, um, you know, and, and, and there's things that you've had to overcome. But um, look at the choices that you made to overcome that, and you know, look at where you are now. So, now, I mean, some awesome advice, Susu. I uh, love that, bro. Um, and then, so uh, we're going to just uh, shift gears again. Um, looking at, um, you know, what, what were some challenges you faced in your career? Because uh, we, we just looked at challenges that you looked at, looked at you know, growing up. Um, but what were some challenges in your career? Like now you're Ferretti, the professional, you know, rugby player. You know, I know that there would have been, uh, you would have had to change some habits. You know, there would have been a strict program structure. So, so what, what was the challenge and how did you overcome that? Uh, yeah. Um, oh, man, uh, too many to list. But uh, <laughs> if I can pick the, the, the top ones, it would be um, just, being, just being professional uh every single day like yeah. um man being a rugby player was everything that i wanted to uh to be when i was young man like um you 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 ask uh the the boys that are hung around with and, and stuff like this boys still in the in, in playing rugby and in around now like when we grew up uh, it's it's sort of like everyone just knew that you know that's that's what we want to do there was like a group of us like you you would know them like molly um molly, yeah, Tomar, molly. Um, who- um, all, uh, you know, all the north, yeah, all the north side boys that you know, we all grew Bucky. up. And Bucky, Bucky as well, you know, like oh, Bucky's a, Bucky's a special story. But yeah, no, he's a. Might have to get him on the next one. You have to, man. You have to. Uh, you get all the get all the burn boys, eh? The Melbourne boys. Burn boys, man. Yeah. Burn boys. And like, um, like uh, I think you you mentioned it before, bro. Growing up, um, I there was a there was a certain player that I looked up to. Um, uh, his name is Christian Lily Funnel. Yeah, and um, we went to church together, bro. Wow. Uh, probably doesn't remember this, but he always used to. Um, it was Northgate Church, and we went there. And uh, I was just a little kid, and I used to call him Nu because everyone used to call him Nu. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he'd turn to me and he'd be like, "Nah, don't call me that. Call me Andrew Mertens." Oh, me yeah. Andrew Mertens. And I'm like. Who the heck's Andrew Merton? So I went and asked my dad who Andrew Merton is, and then dad was explaining me who he is. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> he, he should be good. So, um, you know, that was one guy that that um, he was, and he was an example of someone that was, you know, raised in Melbourne but had to move. Yeah. Um, he he had to move to go make a a, a name for himself, and man, he, it was probably is look look at his career now. I mean, he's a he's he's an awesome um, um ambassador for the game. And for for young for young Islander boys that live here in Melbourne, oh. but uh, that was the challenge that all of us faced as Melbournians, man. Like if we wanted to play rugby, we had to leave. So that was the first challenge of like we had to figure out how. Like you know, um, my dad was planning um, scholarships and stuff to go um, to Queensland and 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 Sydney. Um, but you know, thank thank God that uh, the Melbourne Rebels popped up. Mm. Then uh, that's when, when when we heard the Melbourne Rebels popped up. My dad, me and my dad, just looked at each other and we just said, "Oh no, let's let's work. Like you know, let's let's try and um and and do things, man." Uh, and then the next challenge above that was just you had yeah, there's a mindset like you got to be able to 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 want to learn. You know what I mean? Like and that's want awesome. to grow. Uh, and I luckily I learned this quick with uh. You know, like uh, I had um, my, my dad used to chuck me, my mom and dad chuck me in uh, piano lessons and guitar lessons and wow. um, stuff like that. So 
in order for me to learn, I had like to learn those skills in time for my exam. I, I had, I understood that in order for me to learn, I had to practice and I had to open my mind so that I could, you know, keep learning and just keep trying and stuff. So I applied the same thing for, uh, to rugby. Um, if there was, if there were better players than me, I would watch them. Um, YouTube was big back then. So I'd be watching like, um, YouTube clips of like Quade Cooper and oh, Jonah Lomu, man, when Jonah Lomu videos yeah, yeah. were coming out, man, that was the best, like, you know, I'd watch um, how Jonah Lomu would place his, like, how far away from the player he'd, he'd place his foot just so that he could time his bump off and um, I used to watch that step that Quade Cooper did on um, Corey Dane. Yeah, yeah. Um, over and over again and like, you know, foot and footwork was a big thing because I was a number eight back then, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll just be watching and learning and watching and learning and learning and just, just keep practicing and training. And then, and then that was sort of the mindset that I, I, that I came in. Um, because yeah, I had to, I had to understand that it doesn't matter how good you are up in, um, super rugby. This is, this is Laurie Weeks telling me, uh, Laurie Weeks was saying that, uh, yeah, big Laurie, he was telling me like, you know, you, you, you grew up in, um, in age rugby, like 14s, 16s, 18s, uh, 20s, and then, you know, you think that you're good, you come to Super Rugby, you're, you're, you're nothing. <laughs> you're, you, you, you go back to the to the beginning like you were learning how to play under 12s again, you know? Yeah. So, um, so that, yeah, so I just kept learning and, 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 and taking that same mindset through, through my career. And then I guess the last one will probably just be um, injuries. Um, injuries was uh, is another is another thing, man. Like, and I respect those players that um, that get injured and then come back, um, keep getting injured and then come back. Uh, someone yeah. that I knew that was uh, struggling with that growing up was Jordy Willis. Um, yeah, he's yeah. a wallaby oh, yeah, now. Right. Yeah, but I'd watch this kid getting injured. Like, I think he's he's probably had a hundred knee surgeries on his on uh, on his knee, and that was like from the ages of 14 to 18. Wow. So um, he was he was someone that I watched closely growing up, you know, because, you, you, you know, when you're playing, you, you're not just learning from the top guys, you're learning from the, the, the younger guys as well. And then just to see this guy pull through and all of a sudden he's wearing a, a, a Wallabies jersey um, and playing in the World Cup and stuff, you know, like they're, um, true testament, and that was a that was another skill, bro. Like that we had to, it was mental fortitude, pretty much, yeah. when you're going through like injuries and stuff. Because when you get injured, man, you're you're thrown into a rehab crew, and the coaches aren't talking to you much, and you're it's pretty much you alone in your thoughts. So you spend a whole day just going through little exercises. You got no, you're not doing any rugby, and and then you go home. So literally, the only people that you talk to are the physios and stuff like that. So that was another, and I and I had a I had a couple of major injuries um, within my ankles and my feet. So, um, so yeah, that was that was a, those those were other big things, man. But yeah, yeah those were the things. Yeah, man, that's um, that's good. It's good that you talked about that because you know a lot of like what I'm finding with the work that we're doing at Onama, um, you know, there's a lot of. And, and, and athletes that we've had come through in the past, you know, there's a there's a Bible verse that many many are called but only few are chosen. Like so, many many want to be NRL, many want to be Super Rugby, many want that life, but only few are chosen. This is how I interpret it. I feel many me in context of sport, many are chosen because only only a few are willing to do whatever it takes, or only a few have the mindset, or are, you know, like you were saying, you know, um, are willing to learn. Um, you know, willing to learn and change their habits and change their ways and to, to, to be the professional athlete because it's pretty much your job. And, uh, you know, you, you can't just be a build-up and be like, yeah, I want to be an all-black and then not willing to do what it takes or whatever it takes. And so it's awesome that you touched on that because, uh, you know, I know we, we have a lot of athletes coming through right now. They have big dreams and aspirations, but now they get to hear from someone, um, you know, who, who, who just recently retired um, and, and, you know, what it's like and what it takes. And so for those that are watching, uh, make sure you've got your pen and paper, you know, write down everything that Ferretti is saying because you got to know your why. you got to know why, like, why you're playing. Like, why do you want to play? Right? If you're just playing because you want to, I don't know, because it looks cool or sounds cool, then maybe, you know, find something else. But 
if you have a bigger reason to why you're praying, then, you know, like what Ferretti mm-hmm. said, you got to prep your mind for that because um, it is going to be challenging. It's going to require you to grow on and off the field. So that's awesome, Ferretti. Thank you uh, for sharing that, Usto. Um, oh, and then just, uh, just uh, our last couple of questions is, um, if you can just, um, wait, just, uh, sorry, our last question uh, is, uh, you know, if you, were to sp- if you were speaking to the athletes right now, Ferretti, like if, if it was just you and them, like you, this is when you, this is, so we've done the warm up, we played the game, right? And then now it's going to try on the corner, you know, when your feet is hanging up. Yeah. Try on, you know, I'm, I'm giving you a short ball, right? Short ball, no look past <laughs> like that. And then like Ferretti's going to score the try. And then the crowd, the crowd is the, the athletes, you know, cheering you on. Um, you know, if, if, if you had any final words of advice for the athletes, but also for parents, you know, anything that you've learned or any wisdom they can shift in, what would be those, those, those final key words for them to encourage them? Yeah, look, um, probably just like, just what I hit on earlier, like, um, just be the most, like, if you're, if you're probably not the most talented person that you, um, um, that, that's within your little group right now, um, there is one thing that you can control and that's just being, having that ability to just learn and just oh. continue to apply. Um, I've come across so many talented players, man, like you no know, dope guys that have been, you know, picked uh, before me um, in every single age group uh, and thing. And then, you know, I, I and then not, no, no dub to them, but anything, but I was playing super rugby uh, before them, you know, and, and that was just pretty much just because I, I knew I had that mentality of just wanting to learn and, and wanting to, to just, you know, keep getting better. And, and that's what I tell my kids now. Like, um, my kids are currently um, playing basketball and stuff. You know, like I've just seen them develop as uh, young athletes and stuff like that. The same principle applies. It doesn't matter, like, you know, how good you are or how good you're not. It It's all about learning. And I think... Uh, during the first lockdown, we got to see, um, you know, th- did you watch The Last Dancers? Um, yeah, man, I, loved, I loved that, man. I was glued to them. Yeah, bro. So Michael, Michael Jordan, um, when he was in college, he spoke about not being the best player. Like, you know, and he didn't, uh, he, he wasn't noticed uh, as much. He, they knew that he had skill and stuff, but um, what I really loved about it, and I found similarities too between uh, me and him in that aspect, was uh, the fact that he he just wanted to learn and he just wanted to just keep being like beating himself, like he just wanted to keep um, bettering himself all the time. So by the time the end of the um, the summer came, where they go on break, and then they came back, the the, all these um all these peers were looking at him and saying like shucks this guy's gone so much better like you know he's gone so much good and then uh, so much better and then by the end of the season he was the best player in their team like That's right. and and it just goes to show like you got that mindset where you just want to grow and grow because man that that's what's gonna make you man and it doesn't matter whether it be rugby or netball or business or being a dad or anything if you don't have that mindset to, to want to be um to to want to be coachable or learning or um want to be better and stuff like that you, you you'll find yourself um just plateauing through life man so that, if that's my only advice is just to you know continue to learn continue to uh to keep god first like yeah, you know yeah. you need need God to, to be able to humble you and put you in line and show you the opportunities. But the thing that you can control is, yeah, that ability to continue to want to learn and, and be coachable and be better. But, yeah, good luck to all of you guys out there. And, and thanks so much, Chris, for me to speak, man. I appreciate it. No, uh, man, no, thank you, Freddie, man. Such a, a power, power packed, uh, you know, takeaways there that you've just shared. And uh, you're right, man. Uh, you know, always be coachable. You know, I think, there was a, a, a college basketball coach named is John Wooden. Uh, he won he won so many college basketball um, you know competitions, uh, you know cups, uh, trophies. And um, they interviewed him and they said, "Look, man, the youth, man, you, you've won all these trophies and, and all of that." And so, what what next? And because, well, um, you know, it doesn't matter how much you know how, how many trophies you won. 
it's your ability to continue learning when you think you know it all. You know, yeah. you think you, you think you've uh, accomplished. You know, and that's why, like, I look at it as success is is never a destination. Eh? It's the journey of who you become. Um, and and like you said, you know, the, the foundations of that. I mean, you know, is, is the faith. You know, I know that there are many that are watching tonight uh, that that may not have a relationship with Jesus or or have faith. Um, but um, you know, it's just that you know, for us, you know, we know that that faith kind of keeps us glued. Uh, it keeps us positive, uh, you know, and for, and for others, it might be different things, but um, it's awesome that you touched on that uh, as well, especially for yourself and, and your journey. And so, bro, man, we're so grateful that you came on tonight, bro. Uh, Thanks, man. You know, Appreciate it. Be, what it just a game, wouldn't be what it just a game if we didn't have, uh, you know, you on here tonight. Um, because one, uh, you know, you're, you're current, you know, you've just retired, you know, you're, um, and, and, and two, you know, you've, um, you know, you've been through the journey, of you know growing up in Melbourne and everything happening around you, but you're still able to focus on your dream uh, and all that. And um, I know that those that are watching tonight will be encouraged, be empowered. But for really, we're praying for uh, just God's favor, blessing upon you and all that you do. Um, I know that uh, we're on a different journey together at the moment, which we can't really kind of talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but, business, uh, it's business stuff, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> but um, I know that um, wherever you go and whatever you do, um, that people um, are going to be blessed um, to hear your story. And um, man, please send our love to Shamila and the kids. Thanks, man. Um, Thanks, we'll, and we'll, and good luck to you too, man. Like this thank is you, brother. this is something. Uh, it's not easy looking after youth, bro, and um, and athletes as well. But it's so awesome to see you and Shell do this, bro. It's awesome. I aspire to, to to run my little academy as well, man. One day, so be cool, bro. That's good. That's awesome. You know, you you definitely you know have the story to to be able to you know to to kind of work from because that's what it takes and all that. But before we leave, is there any special shout outs or anything you want to any special mentions to anybody before oh, we finish? Shout out to uh, shout out to all the Northsiders. Uh, you know, I'm living out in the south now because I have to be close to. Uh, to my wife's family, but I'm still a Northside boy at heart. Shout out to Vinny's Pizza and uh, the Hot Damn Donuts at Preston Market. Yo. Any of you guys from the South that want some some real donuts, not the bandy donuts, go to the Preston Market Donuts. And then, uh, yeah, if you want to catch me on in action, mate, come down to come down and ball out at Backingham. You guys want to play some basketball. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. And also a massive shout out to your mom and dad, to, to, to Rita as well, um, just for the example that you... Uh, have all you know that you both um, you know showed them you know for yeah. raising uh, uh, for Ritzy and uh, I know a lot of us parents can learn from that as well. So love you also. Nice chat tonight, brother, and uh, we'll definitely catch up soon, eh? Oh, man, appreciate it, bro. Awesome. Well, that's a, a wrap up of uh, another episode of Morning Just the Game, episode three uh, with the man himself, for Ritzy Sa'ana. Uh, please join us again next week for another episode of More Than Just a Game. Hear from real people about real stories, their real stories about real hope. And so uh, I pray that you'll be empowered and encouraged and that you'll not leave the same way that you logged in uh, tonight, but you'll leave feeling more empowered, full of purpose, especially in the times that we're in. So blessings to everybody. Much love. Iron sharp as iron. So your boy here motivates. Let's go.